So I wasn't going to talk about this. I really was not going to talk about this because I feel like it is very frustrating, but this is the last straw. Now, it's one thing that we don't have enough room for migrants. It's another thing to literally put our kids out of the schools and house illegal immigrants. I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. You're like, well, we need to put them somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. We need to provide food, housing. It's inhumane if we don't provide resources for these people. I'm an immigrant too. I'm an immigrant too. A legal one at that. Who's paying for all of this? All of us are already struggling. Who's paying for all of this? Yet our public officials are kind of shaming us for not wanting to help when they themselves have created this border problem. And it's not just because the Texas governor is shipping migrants from city to city and they have no way of controlling how many buses are coming in and you want to sue them for $700 billion and you think that's going to solve a problem because of a lawsuit. We still have a hemorrhaging problem. Thousands and thousands of migrants, 300,000 migrants coming in per month, every month. And we're expected I guarantee you we're expected to have even more right before the elections in November. Trust. This is a problem that affects all of us, whether we like it or not. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I had to. I had to mention it. So what do we do? It's time to vote. It's time to vote. Put our money where our mouth is. We could boycott all we want and do certain things, but it's time for us to vote. Vote these people out of office. Vote the people that are actually going to be working for us and not making excuses. Those are my thoughts. This is putting harm on our schools, on our hospitals. Taxpayers are paying for it. You see these mayors are now upset about it. The only reason Eric Adams is now upset, why? He shouldn't be a sanctuary city then. That's why we have to defund sanctuary cities. Now Governor Abbott finally did to them what's been happening to Texas for so long. We've got to put an end to this. All right, Mayor, what's your reaction? National leaders should have national knowledge of policies. This has nothing to do with sanctuary cities. Uh, migrants and asylum seekers are paroled into the countries. They're here legally. And so when you have a national leader talking about sanctuary cities, the reason we're having this is telling me she's not knowledgeable on the real topic. All of these cities are now starting to realize that this is what Eric was saying, that this is not sustainable. When you talk about now sustainable, it's also causing some real strain on the systems here in New York. There was a lot of backlash just this week about a high school in Brooklyn. There was a tent shelter. Those families, because of the weather, were moved into that high school. How are we going to continue to handle this? Because those parents were very angry. Okay, well, we need to be really, really clear about that because there were um, people who called in bomb threats, people who made some nasty remarks. That's not New York. Just because a numerical fringe group, uh, nine, ten people call in, we're 8.3 million New Yorkers. We've always used our school buildings during emergencies. Uh, during the fire in 2022, uh, up in the Bronx, we moved those residents into school. When you have flooding, major storms, we move them into school buildings. When you have buildings collapse, we use school buildings. We're not going to say in the city that... Um, when we have an emergency that impacts migrants, we're not going to use our school buildings because no matter what people say, if you look closely, these are still children and adults should not ever put anything that's going to endanger children. Not one child or family sleeps on the streets of the city of New York 
because of what my team has, has done. We did the right thing. And those parents <coughs> who are stating that we can't inconvenience inconvenien someone for one day because of other children, that's not acceptable, and I'm not going to put children in harm's way. So what's the overall fix, the solution? And can the federal <laughs> government do more? Right. Oh, yes, they can. The overall fix is uh, cities, El Paso, Brownsville, Chicago, uh, New York, cities should not be handling a national crisis of this magnitude. We're getting, in average, and just think of this number, there are weeks we get 4,000 migrants that come into our city. Uh, when you have anywhere from 2,500 to 4,000 coming in a week, and you have to find housing, food, shelter, clothing, educating the children, health care, that's not sustainable. It's a $12 billion hole in the budget of our economy. It's going to impact low-income uh, New Yorkers, and it's going to impact every service in this city. And I said it last year, we're going to start seeing the visualization of this crisis. We've done a great job, but we can't continue to sustain this. New York City now suing 17 bus companies for more than $700 million over the seemingly endless arrival of asylum seekers. Mayor Adams says the money is needed to cover the cost of caring for about 34,000 migrants who arrived from Texas. Uh, Adams issued recently an executive order requiring bus companies to coordinate with the city. Well, now the mayor is fighting in court. Governor Abbott's Continuing use of migrants as political pawns is not only chaotic and inhumane, but makes clear he puts politics over people. Today's lawsuit should serve as a warning to all those who break the law in this way. Adams is accusing the governor of Texas of trying to overwhelm the city's ability to deliver social services. So far, no response to the lawsuit.